Like, I don't know, I don't think it's worth having a tampon smell like flowers. Like, it doesn't need to, it's gonna go in your vagina anyway, why does it need to smell like flowers? You know? Hi Bright Fam, today we're going to be talking about, are tampons bad for you? My name is Demi and I created Bright Girl Health. I'm a menstrual health educator and a teacher and I create online content to help you have your best period ever. Are tampons bad for you? And like, I just want to give like a bit of a spoiler right here. No, like they're not horrible for you and they're not going to kill you and we don't need to be scared of them. However, and this is a big however, we're going to be talking about today all of the maybe not so helpful ingredients that are in them that could disrupt our hormones or create skin irritation. And we're also going to be talking about the environmental impacts of tampons, which is a really big issue and something that if we're going to be using tampons, that we should be aware of. And that we should be aware of even if we're not using tampons because all of the waste that these little babies and their applicators create is a big sustainability issue. Um, oh, and on that topic of sustainability, I actually really wanted to show you my new jewelry pieces that I've got. So it actually takes 20 tons of earth mining to produce a single gold ring, which I didn't know about. And I was kind of really shocked to learn that um, and to learn about, I guess, the environmental impacts of like jewelry manufacturing. But I've wanted gold earrings and a necklace for a while now, um, but I didn't want ones that would tarnish and I didn't want ones that would just start looking bad after a little bit of time and I really just didn't know where to get them from and then the brand Ana Luisa approached me and they told me about their jewelry and I was like oh this is so perfect so I'll show you the pieces I got it's this necklace with like I guess there's two tiny little diamonds oh no there's three no there's not there's two and it's kind of like what kind of looks a little bit like faces or a moon face. I don't know, I really like it. And I, it, it's so shiny. It's so much more shiny than any other like gold necklace like this that I've ever had. And I love that it's so shiny. And then I also got two sets of earrings. I love hoops and I love different hoop variations. So I got these like twisty hoops, which are really nice like big chunky um, piece that I can wear but it's not too big or over the top and then I got these smaller double hoops so it kind of looks like you're wearing two but you're just wearing one which I really like how it kind of adds that extra hoop there and I love wearing these two together and I also love wearing the necklace where it's on my chest like this or if I've got like a solid color top I love wearing the necklace over that so it can like break up the solid color. Anna Luisa actually sent me these pieces so I'm super grateful for that. It's really cool because they use all recycled gold in making their jewelry and they actually upload new pieces to their website every single week because they're making them as they go and something they were telling me is that their co-founder used to be a jewelry manufacturer and designer for Louis Vuitton and for Tiffany's so you're getting jewelry made by like the same people who are making those big brands but you're not getting that really high markup and there's jewelry that starts from $49 and then it gets a little bit expensive as well but there's that price range there so that hopefully no matter what your price range is that you can find something that you like and there's a one year warranty on all the pieces as well. So before we jump into the video I want to say a big thank you to Anna Luisa for sending me these pieces and they actually gave me a discount for all of you which is Bright Girl 10 for 10% off if you wanted to go and order and so the link will be below. Alright so let's talk about tampons and I kind of want to split this into two sections. I want to split it into the health side of things so are tampons healthy for us and then the next section I want to split into like are tampons good for the environment which spoiler alert they're not great for the environment. So those are the two things I kind of want to talk about today. So the first section are tampons good for our health? Did you know that by law, tampon companies don't have to disclose the ingredients that they use in their products 
on the packaging. And so that means you won't pick up like a box of tampons and be able to read the ingredients list. They don't have to provide that list for you. They have to say like it's made of cotton or it's made of like cotton and rayon blend, but they don't have to have everything in there, which means that we could be having lots of different chemicals, lots of different ingredients in our tampons without even knowing and kind of with not really a way to know unless you go do your research. And a lot of people I know can't use tampons because they get skin reactions and their body just doesn't like it and they, you know, get red and itchy or burny. Other people, um, I know that when they've stopped using tampons, they've actually had a whole lot of benefit to their hormones. Their hormones have balanced out and even to the point where they've got less pain during their period as well. Let's dive into some of the ingredients that might be in our tampons that we don't know about. And the first ingredient or the first, I guess, compound that I want to talk about is dioxins. Dioxins are a group of compounds that are called persistent environmental pollutants and they can impact human health and they can impact our hormones. Now dioxins are unfortunately a byproduct of like bleaching the cotton. So to get it nice and, and white and clean to make the tampon out of. Now I have my computer here and I'm going to read to you what it says on the World Health Organization website about dioxins. It says dioxins are highly toxic and can cause reproductive and developmental problems, damage the immune system and interfere with hormones and cause cancer. So there's a big link there between dioxins um, and some really not great health conditions. Now, I want to pause here and say, we don't need to be fearful of tampons. This is not what this video is about. This is more about awareness and prompting everyone to go and do their own research as well. We only get such a small exposure to, a, to dioxins in a single tampon. Like, it's not like these are full of dioxins. It's quite a small amount of exposure in a single tampon. And it's in these higher amounts that we see some of those health repercussions that I just mentioned from the World Health Organization website. And off the back of that, I want to read to you something that's on the Therapeutic Goods Administration of Australia website. This is like definitely the kind of a video for a particular kind of person. Like <laughs> you want to know the facts. So I'm giving them to you. So this is the body that regulates all of like what companies can do with their products and put in their products. Um, and so the Therapeutic Goods Administration says, uh, tampons shall not contain ingredients in sufficient concentration to cause toxic or irritation reaction. So it says that they can't have them in sufficient concentrations, but they can have some concentration, right? So they're not allowed to have dioxins in large amounts, but they can have them in small amounts. On average, over a lifetime, we can use 10,000 tampons. Uh, some sources cite 11,000 tampons, some cite a little bit more, a little bit less. It's around that ballpark, depending on how heavy you bleed and all of that. So over a lifetime, if we're using 10,000 tampons, that's 10,000 tampons worth of dioxins. And something about uh, some of these um, compounds and chemicals I'm telling you about today is that they can accumulate in the body and stay in the body for years. So when we look at that, it's like, okay, they're only in small amounts, but over time are those small amounts building up to be big amounts. Food for thought, go and do your own research. You don't have to take my word for it. And I don't encourage anyone to get all of their health information from YouTube, but go do your own research. It's a good starting point. Oh, and the other thing is I will link um, all of the like websites I'm reading from and other articles to go and read to do further learning. Um, down below as well. And the last quick thing about dioxins is that they can accumulate in the cotton plants or in rayon plants, which is also what tampons can be made of. So the next chemical I want to talk about that may be in our tampons are pesticides. If you're not familiar with what pesticides are, uh, they're used to spray the cotton plants or the rayon plants, whatever they're making the tampon out of. They're used to spray those plants to help um, them grow and to help keep bugs away and to help uh, stop them from damaging those plants. So when something is organic, it's when we haven't used um, those particular chemical pesticides. Now here's the kicker about pesticides. They have been classified as an endocrine disruptor. 
endocrine, meaning our hormone system. So they're hormone disruptors. They can mimic our hormones in the body. They can particularly mimic estrogen and bind to estrogen receptors and exert a stronger estrogenic effect. And estrogen is a hormone that when it's too high and too strong can lead to lots of period pain, PMS, heavy periods, exaggerate endometriosis, and also contribute to other estrogen dependent conditions like breast cancer. So this is why you may have heard that it's so important to buy organic tampons. When something is organic, it's meaning that it hasn't been sprayed with a particular kind of chemical pesticide. Um, and so it hasn't got those endocrine disruptors in them. So look for organic cotton tampons if you're wanting to make a healthier choice when it comes to tampons, but you're not quite ready to make the switch to something else other than a tampon. Okay, so the next um, chemical that I wanna talk about or chemicals in this case that are present in our tampons or that could be are fragrances. Now fragrances is kind of just an umbrella term for thousands of different chemicals that could make up a fragrance. And the thing about fragrance is that it can be a big allergen as well. So I mentioned in the beginning, I have a few friends who pads and tampons irritate their skin and the fragrance could be one of the big reasons why they might get a rash or they might get red or get itchy from a tampon or from a pad. And something else about fragrances and some of these other chemicals I'm mentioning too, is that they can um, interfere with our vaginal pH balance and our vaginal bacteria balance. So our vagina is really awesomely designed and so cool and intelligent that the pH balance, which is the measure of how acidic or alkaline it is, helps to keep us free from infection and helps to keep us really nice and healthy down there. And then the balance of bacteria down there also helps to keep us free from infection and functionally functioning nice and healthy down there. And so when we put anything in there, it can potentially disrupt the balance of pH and the balance of bacteria down there. And so if you're someone who's starting to get a lot of infections um, or starting to feel some burning or itching or pain, uh, switching tampons or switching from tampons to something else could be a really helpful thing to do. Like, I don't know, I don't think it's worth having a tampon smell like flowers. Like it doesn't need to, it's gonna go in your vagina anyway. Why does it need to smell like flowers? You know, so I've talked about just a few of the chemicals that could be present in our tampons in the last few minutes. Why is it such a big deal that they're in the tampon? Because yeah, okay, they're in the tampon, but are they, it's not like I'm eating the tampon. Is it really going into my body and affecting my health and hormones? I wanna read you something else from an article that I will link below. Okay, so this article says, the vagina is an effective delivery route of drugs to the systemic circulation system, suggesting that it could also effectively deliver other compounds like toxic chemicals into circulation. So the vagina is really absorbent. It's not like your vagina is separate from the rest of your body. The walls of your vagina are like, they're moist and they're porous and what is in a tampon can be absorbed by the wall of that vagina. Here's an example from that same article that will might help it to like the light bulb to turn on. The vaginal wall has an abundance of arteries and blood and lymphatic vessels in the wall of the vaginal um, mucosa. Also, my husband tells me I should say vaginal, not vaginal, and then sometimes vaginal just comes out. Vaginal's probably more correct. Anyway, here's a big example. Vaginal administration of estradiol, so estrogen, results in significantly higher blood serum levels compared to oral administration. So if someone is being prescribed estrogen and taking estrogen, if they take it vaginally, that increases their blood estrogen levels by a lot more than if they take it uh, like in a tablet orally. Meaning our vagina is absorbing what we put in it. So let's be careful what we put in it. And on that note, it's not just tampons that we should be aware of, but anything like vaginal deodorants, vaginal washes, douching, spermicides, um, certain kinds of lubricants, 
please be really mindful of what you put in there because all of those things can contain ingredients that maybe we don't realize can be irritants and can also be affecting our hormones and our health. So steer clear from them unless you know what's in them and you know um, that they're not going to be harmful. Okay, so that was all on our health side of things. How about the environmental impacts of tampons? So let's go and think about how many tampons we actually use over our lifetime, which I mentioned before hovers around the 10,000 mark, but you could calculate your own um, tampon use if you'd like to. I've just done a quick calculation here of, you bleed for about five to seven days each period. Uh, you use about 35 tampons throughout the week if you're changing every four hours, like is best practice. If you have your period monthly, that's 12 periods a year. So we times 35 tampons per period by 12 periods for a year to get 420 tampons per year. And then say that we menstruate for 23 years of our life. So that's 420 tampons times 23 years. And that's 9,660 tampons. So that's just about an average. You can calculate your own, but that's around 10,000 tampons over a lifetime that each person is using. Now times 10,000 by the amount of people who are menstruating in the world. And that is a a really big number of amounts of tampons that are getting thrown out each month, each year, each decade. It's a lot of waste. And especially when tampons come with those plastic applicators, those plastic applicators don't break down in the environment. They can stay in the environment for hundreds of years, meaning that they're outliving you your tampon applicator can live a longer life than you are, meaning that the first tampon applicator ever used could still be in existence. And tampon applicators are one of the biggest items that wash up on beaches, pollute our oceans, they can be burned in our waste system, emitting, to emitting toxic fumes, and then they also just sit in landfill for hundreds of years. So the environmental impact of using thousands upon thousands of tampons over a lifetime and not being conscious about the way that we maybe dispose of them or make choices um, to buy tampons that are more biodegradable and environmentally friendly or to switch from tampons to completely to a reusable option like a menstrual cup, menstrual disc, reusable pads, period underwear. I think knowing all of our alternatives is so, so important. And knowing the impact of tampons on the environment is really important as well. So I encourage all of you, like I said before, don't just take my word for it and have YouTube, a YouTube video be the source of all your knowledge about this. Go and do your own research. I've left links below to do that. And if you're someone who does wanna to switch to tampons, I have a lot of other videos on this channel about period underwear and about menstrual cups um, and lots of info on my Instagram about different different alternatives to tampons. And if you really do want to stick with tampons, pick a brand that is organic and biodegradable so that it's healthier for your body and healthier for the planet. And also choose tampons without the applicators if you're able to. Applicators can be helpful for people who might have like mobility issues, maybe don't have the best use of their hands, maybe they have a certain kind of disability, whatever it might be. Um, but if you have the ability to choose tampons without the applicators, that's probably the best choice to do so. So let me know if you have any thoughts or to add to this conversation, you can leave those down below and I'll read them. Um, but I hope you learned something and I hope you continue to go and do some of your own research. Thanks for watching guys and if if you did want to go get yourself some gorgeous jewelry, my code is BRATGIRL10 for 10% off at Anna Luisa because look how pretty! I love them. I love them so much. All right, go and bleed into a biodegradable tampon or a environmentally healthy alternative. <laughs> Bye guys. My book, The Braco Guide is officially available. It is all about you understanding your menstrual cycle and your hormones.